Want to know how to turn this into this? Stay with me. Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So, <laughs> so as you can see from the opening segment, I recently had what I would characterize as an relatively epic failure trying to put a juice groove into some really nice cutting boards that I have made. Um, I actually made two, as you saw in the first picture, and I put a groove in both of them. One of them went what I would characterize as horribly awry. <laughs> uh, the other one, it, it turned out much, much better, but not perfect. So to create these juice grooves, I actually created a jig. Um, anyone who has been watching this channel for a while has seen some stuff in my back on the X carve there. I'd printed 3D printed some stuff a while ago, quite some time ago, I might actually add, just had a chance to put it together. And I, uh, I practiced a couple times, uh, apparently didn't practice well enough with the machine in action and uh, got, a little, got a little sideways with the router, <laughs> freehanding the router, creating the juice groove. And so I just wanna walk everyone through the design that I did in Fusion 360 for the jig and then uh, some video of me assembling it and pretty sure I got some video of me using it, I'm not sure. Um, we'll figure that out, I guess maybe when I edit this. <laughs> But nevertheless, you know, failure is a learning opportunity, and uh, let's just say that we uh, we learned some things here. So uh, let's cut over to Fusion and let's take it from there. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. What you see in front of you is the jig that I created. Um, the cutting board actually rests in these little L brackets here, and you can screw them down through these holes. Uh, these boards are what the router actually runs against. The side of the router will run against these rails and that'll keep a uniform distance away from the edge of the cutting board. And then these spacers are actually what determines how far away from the edge of the cutting board the router bit actually hits. Now let me turn on the uh, cutting board here and then the uh, kind of outline of the router bit I have. Um, so this distance from the board to the edge of the cutting board is determined by the spacers. I have a number of different spacers I created here, half inch, three quarters, one inch, whatnot. Um, and depending on the width of the router base, mine is seven inches wide. Uh, the distance from here to the center line of the bit here will be determined by the spacers. So all you need to do is put the correct size spacers in, you put your board down on these pieces, get everything centered, you kind of clamp these uh, one by threes down. Um, you screw everything down. You can see I have uh, screw holes here for the outside and then screw holes here for the inside here. Screw everything down, run the router around. It's very simple, very straightforward, unless you don't do it right. And we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so that was Fusion. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you a quick little montage video with some cut-ins, with some explanations of me building the jig get everything aligned, and then actually doing the routing. Okay, so let's talk about what happened here. Um, so as I was routing, I was busy watching the bit and making sure the bit was cutting into the wood. I was not watching the edge of the router up against the jig. And because of that, 
the router wandered forward, and because I was watching the bit, I didn't notice that it was getting further and further away from the edge. And about halfway through the board, uh, you can see that I was like, oh crap. And I pulled it in, and I started watching the router bit again. Um, and it wandered out again. So I ended up with a lovely wavy line. Okay, so we gotta put this in context here. That entire cut across the front of the board was 19.1 seconds long from turning the machine on, sinking the bit down, and cutting it across. Uh, this little snippet here uh, has been now 32 seconds. So it happened very quickly. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, more importantly, I didn't pay attention to the grain direction relative to the rotation of the router, which is always really important. Uh, because if you don't pay attention to which direction the router is turning, it will wander on you because you're cutting against the grain, which is known as uh, climb and or conventional milling. And so when you're uh, doing uh, climb milling, you're pulling into the grain. And when you're doing conventional milling, it's pushing away from the grain. So it's pushing, say, away from the jig. <laughs> so you end up with a set outcome. I'll cut back over to the cut. I realize my mistake. I tried a lot harder for the next couple passes, and you'll see that. Okay, so I just wanted to point something out on that cut there. So you'll notice how the router kind of got away from me. I was cutting with the direction of the router bit turning. So the router bit was literally pulling away from me. You can see that it very quickly jumped forward as I started cutting and I tried to get control of it again and then got away from me again. You don't want to necessarily cut in the direction your routing bit is going unless you're willing or at least capable of controlling the router bit. So, word to the wise. Okay, so there you have it. You can certainly see that the last cut that I made on that board across the back side of the board was relatively controlled. The router wasn't getting away from me. It was pretty straightforward, nice even pressure. I had a good pull towards me. It, the machine wasn't walking away from me. It wasn't really getting any tension. It was a good controlled cut. So. <laughs> I like that cutting board and <laughs> it's pretty much destroyed right now. But you know what? I decided that I'm keeping it as a kind of uh, memorial, a memory of doing things right or attempting to do things right and not necessarily succeeding. So not everything works out the first time. So it doesn't work out the first time. Nevertheless, I have the jig. The jig is good. It worked out pretty well. It's kind of hard to assemble. I'm going to maybe work on that. I now know that I need to pay much, much more close attention to the direction of the router bit, direction of the router spin relative to the wood grain, right? I need to be much more cognizant of what I'm paying attention to when I'm actually doing the router routing, I should say, uh, rather than watching the machine route, <laughs> I probably want to pay attention to where I am <laughs> sending it as opposed to the output of what it is doing. Nevertheless, it worked out. Um, I have a cutting board with a juice groove. I'm thinking maybe next time, maybe not routing as deep and going to another pass, but I'm a little afraid that a second pass might get a little squirrely. So just kind of going all in with a quarter inch depth the first time might be the way to go, but I don't know, doesn't really matter. 
I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that first time is not always a success. Second time might not be a success. In this case, I had a pretty good success on the second try, but it is what it is. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed what I did here. I hope you enjoyed the fact that there's I'm celebrating success and failure. <laughs> and it is what it is. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. As always, thumbs up to the video, whether you like it or you don't like it, I would appreciate it. More importantly, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Click that little bell to be notified of new content. I'm trying to post a new video at least once a week. Um, I have some interesting, cool things coming up for Halloween. So I hope you get to watch it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to be inspired. Have a good night.